Hey Shoeby Dealers, how are you doing? Well, I had a thought-provoking uh, comment on one of my videos last week from Helen Alexander Bristow, uh, which said, how do you get movement into your illustrations? I find this the most challenging part of illustrating my characters. And in fact, if you go back and look at the illustration she commented on <laughs> here, <laughs> which was called, what to draw in an illustration? It, it kind of made me think, I don't know, it's something I do instinctively. And so I have to kind of think about it. So the first thing I did was I went and had a look at Helen's YouTube channel, see if there were any clues. Helen's got a few videos up there, go up here and click and go subscribe to her channel. So there were two things that uh, I kind of feel I got from watching Helen's videos. First, she's very much a very accomplished um, student of drawing but she's sort of really trying things out wants to be an illustrator and i can hear in her voice that kind of hunger that she really does want to be an illustrator and she's working at it and she's trying all sorts of things and reaching out and learning and learning and learning and 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 that is very important the second thing that struck me while watching uh, helen's video of her illustrating the mad march hare from the alice in wonderland story is that Helen and I are very, very different in our approach and then in the way that we work. And on the very limited evidence, uh, I would say that Helen is much more of a decorative kind of illustrator. OK, so you've got this sort of group of people who are called illustrators and essentially we're kind of telling stories, uh, expressing ideas with pictures. And some of them do it in uh, a kind of decorative way and some of us do it in a cartoony way some of us do it in a very graphic way and everybody has different ways of doing it because we're all different the thing that i would immediately say to helen is don't worry about trying to get action into your characters because you're not that kind of an illustrator <laughs> or at least at the moment i would say you're very much a decorative kind of illustrator and there is a calm and a peace in your illustrations which aren't in mine because I'm a kind of a hectic kind of scribbly kind of drawer and that's the way it comes across and I'm kind of wanting to zoom 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 um, and if I try to do calm decorative kind of work I get <sighs> oh, no, it's a scribble in the corners because <laughs> I want to get on and that's just me that's my personality and one of the things about being a professional illustrator is that the person who is commissioning you or the person who's buying your work or whatever that's what they want they want that you-ness that comes over in your work and if you're spending a lot of time trying to be somebody other than who you are it's going to show up in your work to the person who wants to buy it and to commission you so i think one of the really really hard things um, for illustrators is to actually know themselves <laughs> to, to understand who they are and what it is they're doing and just do it uh, and I, when I was at art college I had great ambitions um, to be a kind of a, a roving reportage that was a word we threw around a lot in those days a reportage illustrator I remember I was very taken by uh, the way David Hockney had been commissioned by the Sunday Times magazine to go to Egypt and paint Egypt stuff. Thought, yeah, that sounds cool. And so I sort of thought about doing that, but it wasn't me. And also I kind of thought of doing um, what, what's called editorial work. And the editorial is, um, you know, for magazines and stuff like that. It's not kind of commissioned quite so much now, but uh, and advertising and stuff like that. And so when I left college, I went to the uh, I went to the Radio Times, which is the TV listings magazine. And that was the place to be seen as an illustrator in those days. And they commissioned a lot of work. And then suddenly they all went into photographs and they just dismissed me in seconds. And and I said, why? I said, you're not editorial. And I said, why not? And they gave me about 10 minutes of going through my work and said, look, you know, every page you want to turn see what happens on the next page you know we need a bang you know it's just there tells the story yours you want to turn the page and see what happens they said you're a book illustrator 
and you know go and see book publishers don't waste your time in editorial unless of course you change your style you know and that that would be a different thing and and they said and in fact really you are a children's book illustrator <laughs> don't waste your time just go to children's book publishers and so that's what i did and um and 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 i did make this conscious decision at some point yes i am a children's book illustrator bang that's what i do and no i'm not going to do that i'm not going to do that um so having then decided that's what i'm going to be then i kind of started learning <laughs> stuff for what I do. So if you feel really comfortable doing calm, decorative kind of work, then that's fine. And there are people out there who will commission you to do that. And you have to kind of work out exactly where you fit within the market. It's, it's all about niches. Um, and uh, but, but, but if you really have it in you that you don't want to do that, although you're doing it at the moment and you, you need to change, then, then you have to kind of really work out how you're going to get more sort of movement and stuff into your work. So this is kind of part two. <laughs> when I first started illustrating children's books, um, text was this incredibly precious thing um, that you paid a lot of money for. And so it was just kind of, mm, there it was, and there'd be a space, and they'd tell you, illustrate that space, square box. And then suddenly, you know, the, the Apple Mac came along, and text could flow everywhere, and it was relatively cheap uh, to produce. I think it was kind of Shirley Hughes who did a couple of books. The text kind of left this box and started you know, being more, a bit more free and the illustrations started to weave in and around uh, with the text. And I had this fantastic editor at the time who had spotted this. Um, and she sort of said to me, we're, I want to do this series and we're going to call it Integrated Text. <laughs> and she had a vision for it. And, and there, there literally were tears. Um, and at one point I tried to give up and say, I don't want to do this. And she kept pushing me forward and suddenly something clicked. And I think the, the one thing I remember her saying was, um, don't be a camera on a tripod drawing a scene. Uh, be like, um, you know, it used to be a great big crane where, you know, the, there used to be two guys and an enormous Panaflex <laughs> camera on the end <laughs> in the movies. And they used to be able to move up and down and zoom in and around. Now we've got drones, we've got, you know, cameras can do all sorts of things now. She said, but be like that, be a, f a free camera. You can zoom in on any angle and see what's going on. And that click something in my mind and that just completely freed me from this um you know camera on on a tripod just sat there like when i went out sketching i wouldn't just sit in front of the thing i'd go go to one side and you know maybe go around the back and look for sort of something different to draw a different angle on things and then when it comes to movement you have to go and draw movement and that comes down to your sketchbook and and so you know when i'm sat at when i'm sat at railway stations then i get my sketchbook out and i draw and and i draw people as they're moving along and and it's not a you know sometimes in college you'll get you know, three minute sketches no this person they go past in 10 seconds and you've got a whoa, 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 whoa. what was that what was that movement um and and on the TV, TV is great if you draw stuff from the TV uh, because the TV, it cuts every three seconds and that's all you have is to get an essence of something and then draw it down. Uh, and, and then I suppose it's kind of the speed of the drawing as well. And I know watching you, Helen, draw and you're drawing very, very gently and carefully and I think, oh, I wish. <laughs> like that and and i probably make mistakes and throw it out and start again because i'm that's kind of how i am i scribble and and, and i i kind of not very good at drawing slowly so i suppose maybe that's part of it uh, but i in the end i think it's part of your makeup the really great thing watching your videos helen is that you are searching and you are trying to find answers and not being satisfied <laughs> and 
Um, and maybe I will develop this idea now that you've raised it in my mind. How do you get motion in it? But this is my immediate thought. My immediate thought is, do you really, really, really want to do that? Uh, because you, you know, you have got a style and you've got a kind of a, a calmness about your work. And from a business point of view, there's a niche there waiting for you. And if you stick to that, that's great. But I think uh, I, I know myself. I do something, I've just done it, get a bit bored, want to move on, I want to do something new, I want to do something new, I want to you know, learn something new, I want to you know, try it a different way, try it a different way. Some people are very, very happy to have found their niche and just keep working at it and just improving and improving and refining and refining that niche. And I suppose my niche is children, illustrated children's books, but I keep wanting to bing, bing, bing. <laughs> pushing it I'm pushing at the envelope all the time at least I think I am uh, and that's what I want to do so part of it I think is your temperament and the rest of it I think is that you need to go out and sketch <laughs> and draw action because I don't think you can do I don't think I don't think you can do action in a really really considered slow quiet kind of way maybe having done your sketches you can then transfer them somehow um, and then do that but then that that's going to be in a whole different style that it, it isn't me and it's not my way of doing things um, and there might be someone else who, who knows how to do it but I think from actual just straight um, how to draw action and how to get movement into your uh, illustrations and characters then I think maybe I need to do another kind of slightly more technical video. And this is, I guess, more of an advice video. So that's probably where I need to wrap up and say, make sure you are subscribed to the Shoe Rainer Drawing channel and keep coming back for lots more uh, drawing videos, uh, drawing advice videos as well. And uh, in the meantime, keep drawing, drawing, drawing. <laughs> practice, practice, practice. And I'll see you next time. You take care now. Bye bye.